Thank you very much. Um, parati po akong ano eh, ini-invite. Hindi naman ako tumatanggi. Kay Ian, may kasalanan ako. Meron ako na miss na invitation niya. Kanya nag apologize ako publicly. Okay. Uh, as the title slide articulates, my narrative will be updates on safety of COVID-19 vaccines. First, let me also declare that my former chair is here, Dr. Lulu Bravo. She's the inspiration why I stayed at NIFIC. Pero ngayon po, former chair, uh, former co-chair na ako kasi umalis din po ako because of certain conflicts of interest. Um, in the spirit of transparency, this is my conflict of interest that I declare. Although you might see I am conflicted, but let me explain that the content of my presentation mainly comes from the DOH FDA uh, website. Uh, this is the roadmap to the discussion, and this is where I got my uh, lecture content. Now, in order for us to be put on the same page, let us first define what is adverse event, and serious adverse event for that matter. Adverse event following immunization, can whatever happens after being vaccinated, dapat po din declare yun eh. So, pagka serious naman, it should have any of the following as defined by the bulleted form here. Uh, inpatient hospitalization, prolongation of existing hospitalization suffered by the vaccine recipient, significant disability and incapacity, and then life-threatening such as anaphylaxis experienced right after vaccination, or yung pong mga pregnant na hindi nila alam na nabakunaan, nagkaroon ng birth defect, dapat po din declare din, and those considered to be me medically important event. Now, let's look at, sabi po natin, uh, ito pa po isang problem. Uh, the data from the FDA website are usually updated every week before, pero currently ngayon, there's a scarcity of data, siguro po dahil Ang hirap po, ah, kanya po ang pipresent ko sa inyo from onset of March 1, 2021. Ang latest po will be October 31, 2022. Dapat po we are expecting meron sa November. Hindi po siya lalabas, siguro kung lalabas man. Uh, for October updates, siguro po mga, ano na yan, mga December midweek or late December na po. So, yung pong doon sa data na makagagather nyo, galing po yan sa VigiFlow. It's a national database of adverse reaction in the Philippines, no? It includes reports from various epidemiology surveillance unit, uh, the Department of Health, vaccination sites, hospitals and patients, consumers, and EUA holders. But this is nowhere comprehensive. Kasi po, this is a passive surveillance. Kung sino lang po gusto mag-report, yun lang makakukuha natin data. So we're missing a lot. We don't know uh, where the other reports are coming from. Tapos, sino po ba pwede mag-report? Si ano po, uh, yung mga nakasuffer ng adverse event, they can go directly to where? Either go to the FDA website, go back to the site where they were vaccinated, or they can report to the uh, EUA, EUA holders. So, pero hindi po pwede sabay-sabay doon sa tatlo. Isa lang dapat ang pipiliin nyo para hindi po magkaroon ng uh, bloating of data. Now, this report contains all suspected adverse reaction regardless of any possible uh, causal relationship in addition to the information Yung po mga committees such as National Adverse Event Following Immunization or Regional Adverse Event Following Immunization, we request data before for analysis, just confirmation of what was declared or any uh, supporting evidence just to do the investigation. And with this verification, it may validate what has been declared or it may change the assessment. Now, these adverse reports are necessary for safety assessments and of the vaccines, making sure that the benefits always outweighs the risk. Now, currently we have uh, nine vaccines that have been approved for EUA, pero dal pito lang po yung nagagamit sa rollout. And dun sa seven na yun, yung pong CoronaVac, Vaxeria, o AstraZeneca, Comirnaty, and of Pfizer and Spivax, o Moderna are the ones being used in the rolled out more as compared to the others. Now, these are the data 
current po, as of October 31, 2022, of suspected adverse reaction. Look at the total number of doses. Well, more than 168 million, 431 and 865. Now, number of fully vaccinated individuals, roughly more than 73 million, and number of individual doses, it's 20,594,592. If you look at the adverse events, no, reports, that is only 110,027 of the 100, from the 168 million. And looking at its percentage, it's only 0.07% of the total dose administered. Yung serious, mas nalong konti. Uh, it's roughly 10,184. That's roughly 0.006% of the dose administered. So mukhang maganda po yung ano natin, safety. Now, let's look at the individual uh, declaration of adverse event. Uh, we all know that CoronaVac was used in the first, from the, the first vaccine to be used for the rollout. So... It was rolled out in 01 March 2021. Pero despite that, you'll see that taking the lead of the total dose administered will be your community of Pfizer. Nasa 70,857, more than uh, 671 doses delivered or vaccines. No? Following that will be your CoronaVac and then your AstraZeneca the third. Now, if you look at the total number of reports, makikita nyo po dyan, um, topping the list of adverse reports will be your AstraZeneca, which is 37,566, followed by your uh, CoronaVac, 36, more than 36,000, and then Comirnaty, Comir uh, 22, more than 22,000. So there's an interplay po of uh, changing from the leadership. No? Now, if you look at, you divide the adverse events reported, whether serious or non-serious, you'll see that topping the list this time is your AstraZeneca at more than 35,000, then followed closely by your CoronaVac, and then followed third, far third will be Cominarty. But if you look at the serious adverse events, you'll see that topping the list will be your CoronaVac, which is 3,427, then closely by your community Pfizer 2634 and then AstraZeneca 3. So yung pong top na nakikita nyo, yun lang ang no, maraming mga reports. Now if you look at the distribution by gender, you'll see more females compared to males. Remember po, just to call your attention, yung ating initial rollout was healthcare workers. No? Yung pong population ng healthcare workers ng, ng Department of Health reflects mainly majority are females rather than male. Kanya lang po gan, kan, that's why the, the distribution. Now, if you look at the age, you'll see confirmed in 8 to 29, 30 to 39 years of age were the predominant or the dominating uh, reports from this population. Why? Because the DOH or health sector population are a young population. Kanya yun, yun din po yung reason why there is more younger population. Then, eventually following those uh, lead, uh, 18 to 29 to 39 will be 40 to 49, the more senior adults at saka yung po mga senior citizen kasi yun sumunod do sa rollout. Eh. Now, let's look at the individual reports. There were fear of pregnant women and lactating mothers, but so far, what was in the data is that overall data suggests that the benefits of COVID-19 vaccines outweigh any known or potential risk of vaccination during pregnancy and lactation. Pagka po sinabi yan, mayroon po mga minor reports, meaning they're not really significant, but it, vaccination is still encouraged, no? which is, should be. Then, remember, the vaccination rollout in children. Initially, it was 12 to 17, started on the 15th, and then, what you will see is, uh, as of October 31, 2022, there were 4,418 reports that were received. The 435 reports were tagged as serious, 358 were hospitalized, then 3,983 were non-serious. Most of the non-serious were just reactogenic reactions, whether it be systemic or local. Then, you have vaccination of the 5 to 11, 
Nag-start po yun, February 7, 2022. Initially, it was communarity that was used. But eventually, the expert panel, uh, even DOH, uh, added coronavax spike box that would have been authorized by the FDA to be used in the individuals for six and above. Then, as of 31 October, the reports again would show you 180 reports were tagged as serious, 157 hospitalizations, then 1,866 reports as tagged as non-serious. Again, uh, there, was one se there was one report na hindi po ma-identify whether it be serious or non-serious. That, that's a problem to be confirmed. And then, again, the reactions were mostly, mostly reactogenic, uh, local or systemic. Then, we, we had this great experience with hypersensitivity reaction. Initially, we have a few, few vaccinated individuals, medyo nakakatakot yung rate, parang one per hundred, parang one per thousand yung nakikita natin na rate. But remember, when you expand the vaccination coverage, you'll see the true picture of the hypersensitivity reaction. As you will see here, the proportion of reported side effects of severe allergic reaction to COVID-19 proved to be statistically rare as the number of vaccinated population increases. And the current report is 1.94 1 or 1 per, hundred, per million doses, which is roughly the universal ano, uh, predictor for anaphylaxis. Then, what about increased blood pressure? That was one of the glaring observations before. Sinabi natin, parang lahat ng screen natin, parang may increase in blood pressure, no? But what happened here is that, remember there was a study by the Philippine Heart Association, ang, ang title nun is Pression 4. They did a nationwide hypertension survey conducted from January to April of 2021. And the prevalence at that time was, uh, was alarmingly increased to 37%, comparing it to the... 2013 data na ano po, 28% lang. So what was happening when we were screening? We were discovering that the vaccine recipients had hypertension that they did not know of. Hindi po natin masyadong i-attribute sa vaccination. Sabi nga eh, it was a, uh, parang it's a, how do you, how do you call it? <laughs> para, para pong ano, it was, a wake-up call that these individuals are hypertensive that they did not know. So now they were suddenly saying that it might have been from the vaccine, but it was really not. So still, when you, call, when you look at, if you look at the vaccination program in other countries, they don't usually screen for blood pressure. So they just vaccinate and then they go home. So, but we were more, uh, how you say it, we were more cautious. That's why we did that. And then we discovered that there were more Filipinos having hypertensive episodes. Now, what about the TTS, your thrombosis, thrombocytopenia? Well, TTS is a case of unusual blood clots with low platelets. No? Uh, there are countries such as uh, they labeled, such as your vaccine and vaccine from AstraZeneca and J&J, where they, that had revised their label to contain TTS which is a ra very rare side effects following immunization. Now, the vaccine individuals should be wary of the bulleted signs and symptoms. If they experience that, they have to go to their doctors immediately. Now, here in the Philippines, the experience is there are 13 cases of thrombosis that have been reported. The causal link of all cases are currently being reviewed and FDA together with the Epidemiology Bureau of DOH shall continue to monitor vaccines, ensuring the benefits always outweighs the risk. So do not fear. Meron put reports being vaccinated, uh, being verified, and then definitely uh, it will be confirmed whether it be related or not related. As you will see here, what about COVID-19 infections? There were 4,749 confirmed reports from COVID infections. Most reports of infections were asymptomatic meaning they were vaccinated because they, they did not have any symptoms at all. Then 256 severe cases resulted into fatal outcome. And most of the fatal reports have not completed their vaccine course. Upon assessment, these cases 
were not related to the vaccines, but were actual COVID-19 natural infections. Now, this is one of the fear of those vaccine recipients. Inflammation of the heart, whether it be myocarditis, pericarditis, and leading to heart failure. No? Cases of myocarditis and pericarditis using your mRNA vaccines such as Comir, Narti, and COVID-19 vac vaccine of Moderna had been reported in countries abroad, such as US, UK, Germany, and Israel. That's why they had to uh, put this in their product leaflet. And most of the cases are young male. In the US, it announced revisions of their fact sheets from Pfizer and Moderna, suggesting increased risk of myocarditis, pericarditis following vaccination. And EMEA, or European Medical Agency Safety Committee, also concluded that myocarditis and pericarditis occur in very rare cases following your Pfizer and Moderna vaccination. Here in the Philippines, there were 19 cases of myocarditis, two cases of pericarditis. Now, five cases of myocarditis had been assessed as product-related as per published literature. Now, 14 cases, including that of their pericarditis, are still currently being reviewed. Uh, despite this, it's not a red flag sign or a signal. So the FDA, together with your EB Bureau of the Department of Health, shall continue to monitor vaccine safety, ensuring that the benefits always outweighs the risk. So your FDA and your uh, Epidemiolo Epi Epi Bureau is on top of the situation. Now, what about CLS? Um, capillary leak syndrome is a very rare condition that cause leakage of small blood vessels, no, resulting in swelling or edema. There were several cases reported in the use of vaccine, uh, AstraZeneca and j, &J. Even the EMEA Safety Committee committed contra uh, recommended contraindications in individuals with previously capillary leak syndrome. Inclusion of the capillary leak syndrome as a new side effect in their product information for your j, &J and AstraZeneca. In fact, there was uh, uh, this are the bulleted will be your signs and symptoms. There are reports of one case here in the Philippines, and it has been assessed as indeterminate. There is insufficient evidence that vaccine caused the reaction. In fact, in our society, we had a case of CLS, but the patient had autoimmune problem, so it might have been associated, or uh, I, we do not know what what really triggered the CLS, but right now the patient is uh, thriving better with your IVIG infusion every month. So currently when we had the meeting, they're planning to increase the IVIG monthly just to maintain the patient in good health. Now what about GBS? It's a rare autoimmune disorder which uh, person's own immune system damages the nerves and that. And their increased risk of GBS had been observed in vaccination for your j and and even the US FDA announced the revision of their fact sheets for j and vaccine to include uh, risks for GBS. Now, even European Medical Agency's Safety Committee considered this causal relationship between j and and AstraZeneca as possible. That's why updated, they have updated product information. Here in the Philippines, 30 cases of GBS had been reported, 10 cases had been assessed as product related, and five cases are indeterminate, and which means that there is insufficient evidence of the vaccine, and 15 are still currently being reviewed. Again, the FDA advised that uh, your Epi Bureau is on top of the situation and still monitoring uh, future reports. What about Bell's policy? Uh, it is a temporary facial paralysis and cause has been, cases have been reported uh, in Hong Kong, Canada, UK, and in the use of your CoronaVac, Comirnaty, and your Moderna. Your CoronaVac vaccination sheet has been revised. This includes Bell's palsy as very rare adverse reaction in Hong Kong, uh, while Comirnaty or Pfizer information has been revised in Canada. Your COVID-19 Moderna has already contain the safety information. So here in the Philippines, there were 32 cases of Bell's palsy that had been reported. Nine cases had been assessed to be product related, 
two are indeterminate, three cases are coincidental, and uh, 19 cases are still being reviewed. When you say coincidental, it's not related to the vaccine. Again, the FDA is on top of your situation. What about ITP or immune thrombocytopenia? It's an autoimmune condition again, affecting uh, blood cells such as your platelets. This is a very rare case that had been reported uh, after receiving your COVID uh, J&J vaccine and also your AstraZeneca. Product information for both had been recommended to be updated in position in the EU, European Medicines Agency to include safety information in your ITP. Um, nine cases here in the Philippines had been reported. Three cases had been assessed as product related. Three cases are indeterminate and two cases are coincidental, meaning not related and one case is still currently being reviewed. The FDA together with the EP Bureau shall continue to monitor safety and ensuring the benefits always outweighs the risks. Now, what about hospitalization? This is one criteria of, uh, as we know, of a serious adverse event, and especially extended hospitalization stay. Reports of suspected reactions uh, of hospitalization does not necessarily mean that the vaccine caused the reaction. And expert reviews and assess whether the vaccine caused the reaction. Based on the reports received, Hospitalization rate is 4.24 per 100,000 doses administered, and commonly reported hospitalization includes your pyrexia, cough, dyspnea, and headache. Now, what about fatal events? Remember, the reports of fatal outcomes does not necessarily mean that the vaccine caused the events, and According to epidemiologic study, underlying conditions or pre-existing medical condition causing fatal events are usually coincidental on the use of vaccine. It is expected that reports of fatal events will rise as vaccination program covers and include more people, those with undiagnosed illness, underlying comorbidities, and pre-existing medical conditions. And most of this events occurred in persons with multiple existing comorbidities, and this includes cardiovascular, ischemic heart disease, CVA, cancer, diabetes infections, including pneumonia. Then according to the Philippine Statistics Office, our such comorbidities are also the top leading cause of mortality in the Philippines. And there are cases of confirmed COVID-19 infections being leading to severe cases with fatal outcomes, which also ranks among the leading cause of death registered in 2021. So some reports are just coincidental also. So you might ask, what is the outcome of our adverse events? If you look at this, more than 70% recovered and more than 14% are recovering. There are some that ends up with fatality, but some less than 10% as unknown and 0.05% have not uh, are resolved, not yet resolved and have resolved with sequelae, but not resolved are 1%. So remember, uh, this is the message of this presentation. Based on current available data that benefits of vaccines in the prevention of COVID-19 and safety of the disease always outweighs any current known adverse reactions in majority of the vaccinated individuals. So let us encourage people to receive the vaccines. The vaccines are there, and the vaccines will not save your life. Vaccination will. And with that, I would like to greet you a advanced Maligayang Pasko sa inyong lahat. <laughs>